<laughs> thank you. Did you say thank you? Ah, you never say thank you. Keep saying thank you. <gasps> What's Blueberry doing? What's Blueberry doing? Flying around. Okay, if you say thank you again, I'm gonna be so excited. Hey everybody, Jamie Lee here from Bird Tricks. In today's video, I wanna go over five general, general, mm, can't speak, bird care tips for beginners. Now, even if you're not a beginner, these might be great reminders for you to make sure that you are doing. Hey cutie! Hey cutie! You call him Blueberry Cute? You like yelled it over there. Hey cutie! <laughs> hey cutie! <laughs> All right, if you've been following me for any length of time, number one won't surprise you at all. Please don't feed a crap diet to your bird. Most likely whatever your breeder or the pet shop or even maybe your vet recommended is not good. Please check the ingredients list. If it starts with corn, sunflower seeds, peanuts, throw it away, don't use it. Please you guys, if there's dyes, fillers, all that crap, dried fruits in there, seeds and nuts in the mix, like, be smart about this, do your research, understand what parrots are supposed to have and what they aren't. Right? <laughs> hey cutie. Um, I had to learn the hard way about diet, actually Bondi Michael Law right here, got really sick from me not understanding the role that fruit plays in the diet, among other things. I was feeding a very popular organic pellet brand to my bird and she got fatty liver disease. In just 30 days of changing it around to my seasonal feeding system, which is explained in my cookbook set, uh, we were able to get rid of any sign that she ever had any symptoms of fatty liver disease. Now it was pretty really, like pretty amazing. I was really proud of myself and had to put the information out there. So I made an entire nutritional course, it goes over sprouting, freezing, um, how to pick produce, how to feed it, all my seasonal feeding recipes plus 72 other recipes, um, tons of recipes in here to help you guys modify and change the diet. I even did a uh, poll trying to figure out what people were feeding their birds. I got answers from hamburgers to mac and cheese to lasagna to all sorts of human foods and uh, was able to make birdie safe recreations of those things. Where are you going? Hey cutie, hey, cutie. we need to do something. Hey. Is the cookbook the best thing ever? Yeah. <laughs> so I will leave a link in the description where you guys can find that. All right, number two is provide the biggest, best cage you possibly can so that you don't suffer from cage guilt. Now, what is cage guilt? Cage guilt is basically feeling guilty that you keep your bird in a cage so you take it out even if that means that your relationship as a whole is going downhill by doing so. So the main thing about cage guilt is that people are taking their birds out of the cage only because they get feel guilty for keeping their bird in the cage. So number one, if your cage is so crappy that you feel guilty your bird's in it in the first place, go buy a better cage, make it awesome, fill it with my all natural toys, just make it awesome so you don't feel so bad that your bird's hanging out in there. It should be an awesome place to be full of enrichment and a place that your bird enjoys being. Second, when people take their bird out of the cage just so they don't feel guilty that the bird is in the cage and then all their interactions end up being punishment or things where it's like, hey, you can't do that, you can't go there, you can't have this, you can't do that. It turns into a really downhill relationship where everything is punishing to your bird. Now, we are really set here at Bird Tricks about the quality of time that your bird is out versus the quantity. So if you have your bird out for six hours, but all the interactions were keeping your bird out of things, getting it to stop chewing on the wall, um, trying to keep it away from the dog, trying not to let it attack your husband, versus 30 minutes of just awesome quality time where maybe you showered with your bird, had breakfast together, you sat down and watched a little TV, um, maybe you had a little cuddle in there, <laughs> whatever it was for your 30 minutes and it was all positive interaction and then you get your bird back in the cage with a treat or to just go simply go back because it likes its toys. Um, that looks much better as 30 minutes compared to the six hours you spent chasing your bird around the house. So keep in mind that it's really, really important to keep that quality over quantity. Right? Speaking of which, you're getting antsy. I think we should swap you out for another birdie. Cause you're like, hey, entertain me. Let's do something. 
All right, so number three is don't let fears build upon each other. So for example, if your kid was afraid of a new pillow or a new pair of shoes that you got, you wouldn't just allow your child to be scared of that forever in its life because that would make a pretty weird human. So just like with your kids, with your birds, you want to give them tools to overcome fear and be brave and be adaptable so they can learn to accept these sorts of things. So when you kind of come across a bird's fear of something, you want to in immediately overcome it and work through that fear. It, that doesn't mean like just make your bird get over it and make your bird terrified until it just learns that it can't do anything about it. You want to actually help your bird to overcome the fear and realize that it's an irrational fear. So anything that is deemed irrational, we want to work through those things. We had a Gala at a recent masterclass who was terrified of this vet wrapped perch because it was vet wrapped with purple. And the bird just thought, what the heck is that? And instead of using a different perch, we immediately clicker trained and worked the bird through it. It only took two or three reps before this bird accepted this perch. So immediately working through these fears is really, really powerful for long-term success. Whereas if you would have allowed that bird to be terrified of that purple perch, who knows how that would have translated to the rest of the bird's life. Would it have been scared of purple sneakers or something else that kind of resembled that? And then the fear kind of builds on each and everything and gets worse and worse and worse where the bird just doesn't accept new things. So we never want to make that with our birds. We want to teach them how to be adaptable and brave. Right, Gizzy? Also, when birds don't learn this, this is kind of a major reason that birds end up in rescues and up for adoption is because people don't work through these things and they end up with a very phobic bird who just can't handle life and it gets passed from person to person to person until eventually ending up in a forever sanctuary and it's just a sad demise for these birds who really deserve better. Number four is make sure to always get your bird a well bird exam. So your bird should be going into the vet annually. That means once a year, your bird should be going and getting a well bird exam just to make sure that everything with your bird looks awesome. You're getting blood work done. You're seeing where calcium levels are and you can make any adjustments necessary with either uh, supplements to the diet or changes and modifications to your bird's diet to make sure that it's on a healthy track. But the, that annual exam is really, really important to making sure that your bird's health stays on track. This means that nails aren't overgrowing, beaks aren't overgrowing, and that you can make sure that you have a healthy bird. You guys want to do this next one together? Comment. Let's see it. The brothers want to do this together. Number five is providing toys that your bird can actually destroy. Now this means not plastic, not metal, <laughs> nothing like that with bells or mirrors or fraying ropes or anything like that where they can be ingested, but all natural, ah. awesome toys, destructible toys that can literally be destroyed into little tiny toothpick type pieces. Um, this is really, really important. You don't want your bird's toys lasting forever. That means they're not enjoying them. So please get them toys that are made of all natural materials and something that they can actually go through and destroy. I know this one might seem kind of obvious to some of you, but you'd be surprised how many consultations I do where I get a good look at people's cages and see that there's absolutely no form of enrichment in them at all. So please do your research. You guys, you can pick up some of my freebies in the video description. I have a ton of free resources on my website that are instant downloads for you guys. They have to do with diet conversion, how to make your own toys, do some DIY foraging stuff, um, just all around basics for bird care. So please check out my freebies and uh, download them below. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. Ah. Can you tell which one's my bird? My bird. Husband's bird. Ooh, ooh. He's like kind of okay with a kiss. Totally okay with a kiss. My fluffy nugget. Husband's not so fluffy nugget. So fluffy. Not so fluffy. I love you both. Ah. Ah. <laughs> I think I got a feather in my mouth. <laughs>